Hello, in this video, I will explain to you on how to find I0 and P0 in this circuit. And the special case about this circuit is we have this ideal of N. So here, our goal here is to find out what is PO and also IO. So that is our goal, PO and IO. And let's take a note on what ideal of M properties is. Ideal of m okay if we have this triangle here so i will have it like that and this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal okay we will have three terminals on this component here okay and what does ideal of m have its properties so if this node here is pa right and this knot here is PB, we have this knot is the same. So I will have PA is equal to PB, right? And then the second thing that we need to remember is the current that goes into the op M here. So let's name this as IA and also this is IB. IA is the same as IB. So I will have IA is the same as IB. But we also know exactly what is the value of the current that goes into the op amp, which is 0 ampere. Good. And on IC here, we cannot calculate this directly. It is not a KCL node. So IA plus IB is not the same as IC okay and then one thing to note if we have op M here we always use nodal analysis so we always use nodal analysis okay because we cannot use mass analysis because we don't know the voltage across this resist across this op M here Okay, now let's see the circuit and extract what can we get from the circuit. Here we are given our reference node here, reference node, or some other books call it the ground. And what does that mean? That means that the voltage here will equal to zero, right? Good. And now let's name this node here as node A. So the voltage here will be VA. Right? And let's name this node here as VB. So the voltage here will be VB. I mean, this is node B. And so the voltage is VB. Good. Now look at this. The positive terminal is connected to one volt voltage source, right? So this is equal to one. Okay. But then remember here we have PA is equal to PB. If this is one, then we know exactly what is PA. So PA is equal to one volt because of the op M properties. Right? Good. And then what can we do? We assume the direction of the current, right? So this is like this. I think we can just assume the direction of the current that goes into the OM here because we know exactly, right? IA and IB is equal to zero, right? And we can use it later. And for the resistor, as usual, I usually uh, do goes down for the vertical components like this and i usually goes to the right for the horizontal component like that good and now what can we do we need to do kcl at unknown nodes which one is unknown pb right because we exactly know what va is va is already known so we have one volt here so we'll have one volt right and so we need to do KCL at PB here. Let's do exactly that. Let's do KCL at PB. 
Okay, KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out, right? Okay, let's see here. Uh, the current that goes in is this one and also that one. So we will have TA that will be 1 and then minus PB divided by 40 kilo ohm the resistance speed window okay and then plus i0 and that will equal to i think we will have this one here we will have pb minus zero divided by 20. good and i think we have to isolate I0 here because I0 is the one that we are looking for. So I0 is Vb minus 0 that will be Vb divided by 20. Okay, and then minus 1 minus Vb divided by 40. Okay, but we need to find out what Vb is, right? But then we need to do KCL at this node here to get the value of PB. Let's do KCL at PA. KCL at PA. KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out. Good. Okay, let's see VA here. There is no current that goes into this node, right? So I will have zero on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I will have all the currents that goes out. But then one of them, this one here is zero, right? Because that goes into the open. Okay, so I'll have zero. And then plus this current here, I will have PA that will be one volt. So I will have one minus pb divided by 40 good but then we also have one more current which is this one here so we will have plus i will have pa here i will have one minus zero and then divided by five kilo good Okay, 0 and 0 will cancel each other. So, I will have moved to this to the left hand side. Or, I think we can multiply both sides here by 40, right? To get rid of this 40 here. So, I will have 0. That will equal to 1 minus Vb. And 5 and 40 will cancel into 8. So, I will have 8 multiplied by 1. I will have plus 8 here. We can move this VB to the left hand side. So we'll have VB here. That will equal to 9 volt. Okay. And that is nice because we know the value of VB now. VB is 9 volt. Right? 9 volt. But then if VB is 9 volt, we can calculate I0. Right? So what is I0? I0 here is VB. I will have 9 divided by 20 and then minus 1 minus 9 divided by 40. so we will have i0 is equal to i think i will have 9 over 20 and minus minus 8 right so i will have plus 8 over 40 but then i will have i0 here that will equal to, what is it? I will have 9 over 20, and then plus, plus 8 over 40. Or I will have 0 0.65. Okay, and the unit here, because we have volt and kilo ohm, this will be in milli. Or we can have I0 here is equal to 650, but the unit here will be in micro ampere. So we have achieved one of our goal. I0 is 650 micro ampere. Good.
But then we need to find out P0 here. Okay, what is P0? Let's see here. P0 is the difference between the positive terminal. And that is directly connected to VB, right? So I will have VB. And then the negative terminal here is directly connected to the ground. So I have VB minus 0. So v, VO or V0, that will equal to VB. But we know exactly what is VB. VB is 9 volt. So we'll have this VO is equal to 9 volt. So that is our V0. We will have 9 volt. And we have achieved both of our goal here. Okay, I think that's all for this problem. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.